121. And I'm just looking this way because I have my computer here. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. All right. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I'm going to read that last part again. The Lord shall. Can someone type in the Lord shall? Not he will, future tense. Not maybe. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thank you, God, that your word is blessed. Thank you, God, that we have this time together to speak on this message, Lord God. And if you can, I had a song stuck in my head that I would like to sing. And if you're home and you know this song, sing along with me. It's a little bit of an oldie, but just like if we were in a church service and before I get into, into the preaching, I would sing a song anyways. Let's sing this together. I don't know if you guys remember this one. Al borde de tu gran trono me postraré hoy a ti. Tú reinas sobre principados sentado a la diestra de Dios. Do you know it? Exaltate, oh gran cordero, tú vives hoy y vivirás. Coronate con mis alabanzas, tu nombre es El vencedor. One more time, sing it with me at home, sing it. Al borde de tu gran trono me postraré hoy a ti. Tú reinas, tú reinas sobre principados sentado a la diestra de Dios. Exaltate, oh gran cordero, tú vives hoy y vivirás. Coronate con mis alabanzas, tu nombre es el vencedor. Come on, sing it right there. Exaltate, oh gran cordero, tú vives hoy y vivirás. Coronate. Coronate con mis alabanzas. Tu nombre es el vencedor. Sí, tu nombre es el vencedor. Oh, tu nombre es el vencedor. Aleluya. Thank you, Jesus. Your name, your name is the victor. You are the victor. Even in this situation, 
you are the victor. Hallelujah. Tu nombre es el vencedor. Hallelujah. So with this scripture that we just read in Psalms 121, uh, as I prepared for this message today, as I prayed and I said, you know, Lord, what is it that you want to speak on today? What is the topic? What's the theme? What's I always go title. Okay, what's the title? And this is what I feel from the Lord for you all today. Some preachings might come from a scripture that someone reads and they get inspired and say, okay, I want this to be encouraging. I, want, I really feel this message is an instruction. I really feel this message is an instruction for the house, for fountain of life. Now, what you do with the instruction is what you do with the instruction. I'm just the messenger. But if you could write in the chat room what the instruction is, I want you to write this. It's very simple. The title of this message is rest. Rest. And I went back and forth with the Lord. Should I say something more? Should, because you know, sometimes we, 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 we think we know what profound means. Sometimes we think we know what deep means and rest to us might not sound profound. Rest to us might not sound deep, but that's what I heard from the Lord to be said today, the 17th of May, rest. Someone write that in, rest. The instruction, I feel God, the instruction for fountain of life right now is rest. I'm gonna say that again, the instruction right now over this season for you who are watching, whether you're in your car, whether you're in your bathroom, I don't care where you're at, whether you're in your bedroom, whether you are watching this on your phone in your kitchen while you're cooking, the instruction for you today, for this season is rest. And we're gonna get into this. I see you typing it in, yes, rest rest these these are instructions and i don't know about you but during my prayer times i ask god questions okay lord what should i be doing because everyone has different instructions every church has different instructions and we have to be careful hallelujah when we see certain things on social media or when we hear different people's opinions on what's going on today because everyone has their own instructions and they might be speaking out of the scope of what the lord told them to do but we need to realize that we have our own instructions amen do you get what i mean you you might have your own instructions when it comes to your family when it comes to your household when it comes to how you manage your money you the lord might give you specific instructions but what I'm feeling over us as a church as a whole our instructions right now is rest rest and I see you writing that in someone put I totally understand Lord rest hallelujah rest we're gonna get into it I'm gonna take a lot of water breaks you know I need to I need to but we're gonna take our time with this amen because you're home so you could be <laughs> You could take your phone with you. You could take your computer with you, wherever you're watching me. So we just read Psalms 121. And what we see from this scripture is that the Lord is our protector and he is our shelter. If you look at the verses, it says how the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade. Then it changes and it says, the Lord shall preserve you from evil. The Lord shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve you. So we see who he is and what he shall be doing right now. We see what he's doing. We see who he is. We see the whole scope right here in Psalms 121. It's powerful to see that God himself, he protects his people. Again, we might say that's not that profound. Okay, duh, he protects us. Think about it. God himself protects his people. He doesn't elect some other being. He doesn't elect some other angel. Or even if it was a high-ranking angel, he doesn't elect someone else to protect his people. So not only is he our creator, not only is he our father, but he's our keeper. He himself 
has given himself the responsibility to watch over you. He himself has given himself the responsibility to watch over your family. To, what does it say? To preserve your going out and you're coming in and 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 for me because i you know we're living in the time we are in i think about when my husband goes to the grocery store and i think of that script that scripture the lord shall preserve him and he's going out to shop and stop <laughs> to his coming back in to the house we do our precautions we do our own measures but the holy ghost is stronger than any purell the holy ghost is stronger than any lysol and we use those things but we know even on top of that the Lord is the one that preserves us in our going out and in our coming in. I think about that. I think about that. So this makes me think, again, the Lord is the one that watches over us. He's the one that protects us, right? This makes me think of the army. This makes me think when the army's in battle and there's individuals in their post. When one gets sleepy, they're able to trade places with someone else so they could sleep. And now someone else takes the responsibility of watching that post. And then when that person gets tired, they trade with someone else. So the whole thing is that that post, that area that needs to be watched will be watched 24 hours, 24 seven. It will never not have someone watching it, but it might be different people because we're human we get tired, we get sleepy, we need to go to sleep. But God is saying, I don't get out of my post. I don't switch with someone. I don't get a substitute when I'm sleepy to now watch over you. Look at the scripture that we just read. Psalms 121 verse four. Behold, he who keeps Israel. Let's change the name. Let's change the name, have fun with me. Behold. He who keeps Alex Colon, behold, he who keeps uh, Elizabeth, behold, he who keeps Ada, behold, he who keeps Carlos and the family, behold, he who keeps Fuente de Vida, shall neither slumber nor sleep. He who watches over you, he who's in his post watching what's coming in, what's coming out. He neither slumbers nor sleep, meaning there's no need for him to go, oh, it's time for me to clock out now. Let me go get Michael. Let me go get another angel. Let me get someone, another being to now take my post because I'm sleepy. No, God is saying, I don't need no one to take my place. I'm here 24 seven. So when we're asleep, God is watching over us. When we're coming and going, God is watching over you. When you're punching in at work, God is watching over you. When you're driving, God is watching over you. When your children are asleep, God is watching over them. God does not slumber nor sleep. And let me tell you, this pandemic, God is still not asleep. God is not slumbering. And you know, it was interesting because I saw the two different phrases, right? Slumber and sleep. And I think Minister Alex is going to appreciate this because we like to uh, make sure we get the definition and make sure we understand everything correctly. So I had to look it up. What is the difference of slumber and sleep? I thought it meant the same thing. Then I looked it up. You ready? Let's see what slumber and sleep represents. Sleep is when you're in a deep sleep. Technically, that means when you are in a reduced consciousness. That's when we say, I was knocked out, <laughs> I was asleep. I don't know about you, if you're a heavy sleeper, a light sleeper, but when you sleep, that's lights are out, you're gone, you're asleep. You're on cloud nine, how some people say. Slumber means something different. You're in a light sleep. That's when you're like almost awake. There's times when, um, especially now, if we wanna watch a movie, and we wait for like, okay, let's have some quiet time. Sophia's already asleep. Let's watch a movie together. And I'm ready. <laughs> What's that scripture? The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. I'm ready. No, I'm not going to sleep. I'm fine. I'm good. And we start watching the movie and I just start going. And then Jonathan's hitting me. You're not paying attention. I'm like, yes, I am. I heard everything it said. Have you ever been in that moment of 
you're you're awake you can hear what's going on but you're already nodding off you're kind of going that's what slumber means slumber is when you're almost awake you kind of know what's going on but you're starting to go in a few more minutes you're going to turn into sleep so look how powerful this is god is saying i don't sleep meaning I don't go into deep sleep. I'm not knocked out, not knowing what's going on. And he's also saying, I don't slumber. I don't even lightly sleep. I think that is so profound. I think that is so profound. I'm sorry, I get a kick out of that. It's like, I don't take a nap. I don't need to just, let me just close my eyes. God is like, I don't need to just close my eyes. I don't sleep. I don't slumber. He is on duty. Someone write that in. God is on duty. And I think of that song, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. He never stops, never stops working. We are flesh. We could only do but so much. After a while, we say, okay, it's time for me to go to sleep. Let me take a nap. I need to recharge. Let me sleep because we're flesh. We have fleshly limitations. God is saying through this scripture, I don't sleep. I don't slumber. So if you think for a second during everything that's been going on right now, that God is on cloud nine, just sleeping. He's not, he's not sleeping. Look at Psalms 121 verse five. The Lord is your keeper. Who's your keeper? Psalms 121.5. The Lord is your keeper. Yes, people are writing it in. God is on duty. God is on duty. Amen. God's job is to keep us. That's his job. Who's our keeper? The Lord. Who's our keeper? The Lord. Not my plans. Not the way I do things. Not if I'm very careful. The Lord is our keeper, that's his job. So then what is our response? What is our job? What's our position? If God is there on his post watching over us, then you know, what, what do I do? God's job is to keep us. Our job is to rest. That's it. Our job is to rest in the finished works of Christ. Our job is to rest in that promise. Oh, I feel that. Because sometimes we want to do God's job. Sometimes we don't want to rest. Now, I, I should be able to rest if I believe God never sleeps. I should be able to rest if I know I have 24-7 coverage policy of the Holy Ghost over me, my possessions, my family. Everything my hand touches is covered and protected. If I believe that to be true, rest should come easy. It's God's job to keep us. We see that in Psalms 121.5. The Lord is our keeper. It's my job to rest in that promise. If I believe there's not a moment he needs to recharge or sleep, I should be able to rest. You should be able to rest. During everything that's going on right now, all the uncertainty, all the unanswered questions, you know what? Like I said earlier, what I've been hearing from the Lord is rest. It's interesting. A few weeks back, I was praying, and I remember sharing this with my husband, and I point this way because he's over here. And I remember saying, man, what keeps coming to my mind is slow down. We're doing things too fast slow down and that was probably like the beginning of april when it was like okay what do we do how do we do these services differently what do we do here and and, and the phrase i think was over me was slow down let me tell you i have a demand you guys know my work i'm a therapist i do marriage and family therapy i help those with mental health issues I, I, that's what i do i have a demand but even i know i need to slow down so you need to know that as well. You need to slow down. And today, even more specifically, you need to rest. Because yes, it feels like you have even more time on your hands. Amen. Hallelujah. But can you manage that time wisely? I remember writing this in on, on a Facebook post. Just like money management, we need time management. Because at least money, they keep producing it. But time, this is it. 
you will never get back time. There's no time policy where you could put it in savings and then you could cash out. The t there, this is it. So we have to be good stewards of our finances, but we also have to be good stewards of our time. Amen. That was, that was a side note for somebody. Are you a good steward of your time? God wants us to let God be God in our lives. And it's not that he's asking for our permission, but the thing is, it's kind of like if I could hear the Holy Spirit saying, can you just let me do my job? It's like I hear the Holy Spirit saying, just let me do my job, Fountain. Let me work. And we're like, but I don't understand. How long is this going to take? And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, let me work. And we're here with questions, but for how long, Lord, I need to know. When am I going to go back to normal? And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, let me work. Let me do my job. There's a line. There's a boundary of what belongs to God and his infinite power and his sovereignty and what belongs to us. The Lord says, yes, make your petitions known. The Lord says, yes, knock, seek, uh, and it will be answered. The Lord says that, absolutely. But then there's a line of, okay, now let me do my job. That's for someone. That's for someone. Let me do my job when it comes to your family. Let me do my job when it comes to your spouse. The thing is, most of us, we micromanage God. And we do it through our prayers. Lord, this is what I want and this is how I want it to be done. I want it to be done in this time frame. I want it to be done this specific way, God. And then we see God moving, but it's like, yeah, but can you do it this way? Can you also include this? Stop micromanaging God. He is the ruler. And, and by the way, he knows what's best for us. Sometimes in our prayers, we try to sound like we know what's best for us. Lord God, I know I need this position because this will give me extra money and this and, and I, I need this and I need that. And the Lord sometimes looks at us like, wow, you, you don't need A, B, and C. I'm still going to give you desires of your heart, but let me do it my way. And that's what I hear the Holy Spirit saying today. Let me do my job. Can you allow me to do my job even if I don't answer every single one of your questions? Can you hush and allow me to lead you where I want to lead you in this season? Come on, that's for someone. That's for someone. We're there, Lord, please. Um, what's going on? How, how long is this going to take? What should we do? Who should I listen to? Do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? What should I do? God is saying, let me do my job. Let go and let God, someone wrote. Yes, Lisa, let me do my job. And you would be surprised how many spirit field anointed children of God that don't trust him. You would be surprised of how many people that come to church, give their tithes, give their offering, get good moral people, good people with, with, with good standards that don't truly, fully trust God. God is saying, rest. Let me do my job. Can you rest in the promises I already gave you? Can you rest in the promises of, of the finished work of Christ that's already behold? Can you rest on that grace? Can you? Can you let God be God? And it comes out in our speech when we don't trust God. Mm, I don't know. Let's see what happens. And we have a lot of Christians that are paranoid. We have a lot of Christians that are listening to so many different voices. And let me tell you, ain't nobody going to paranoid you more than Christians. Ain't no, I'm going there. Ain't nobody going to make you more. You think the news can make you anxious? Ain't nobody can make you more paranoid and anxious than other Christians. So in this time, be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you click on to listen to. Be careful with the different preachers and their different opinions. Remember, they all come from different states. They all have different things that are going on in their lives and they have different instructions for their congregation. Today, what I hear God saying, and pastor, if you feel it too, confirm, write it in. What I hear from the Lord is fountain of life. Rest and let me be God. That's what I, when are we going to open? Rest and let me be God. 
I remember having a conversation with someone. I said, are, are people going to lose their salvation because they can't go into a building? If anything, this should be a time where you are, are, are getting more spirit filled, where you are, 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 are seeking the Lord even more. This should be a time where you get challenged. I pray you get more thirsty. I pray you get more hungry, but it's not for the building. I'm not hungry for a building. The, the church building could be closed for another two, three, four, five, whatever, how many more months. But my thirst is of the Lord. My my thirst is of the godly things. My hunger is of his presence. My hunger is not to sit in the chair that I used to sit in for X amount of years. I miss you, church. I definitely do. I miss seeing you. I miss hugging you. But at the end of the day, my hunger is for the righteous things of God. The church building could be closed. I'm going to still have service. I'm still going to have my so moments, whether it's in my kitchen or in my backyard. I'm going to still feel God's presence. This. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit doesn't just sit on 262 Broadway. The Holy Spirit sits in your address. You don't think the Lord knows your address? You don't think the Lord knows your prayer closet? Come on, I'm, I'm feeling this. You don't think the Lord feels the hallway where you walk through before you walk into your room? The angels are right there with you. Ministering angels are right there next to you. This is a time for us to rest in the promises of God. Come on, somebody. If, if I was in front of you, I would say, raise your hands, clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Algunos que no son pastores quieren, quieren cultos porque no tienen responsabilidad por el, yes, bienestar de la gente. Pastor Sanabria just wrote that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling this, church. This is so for us. Our instructions. Here, this is the thing. Can I go a little deeper? Can I go a little deeper? You guys are home. You guys are relaxing, right? I live in a nice area. When I go outside, I say, wow, this looks great. Things look better. Let's, let's go. I have a backyard. I have a porch. I have room to God be the glory. And many of you who are watching the same thing, you live in a nice area. You, you want some sun, you could sit on your deck. But here's the thing, not everyone has that. And when we think of Nork, the region where God gave us, I'm not talking about any other church right now. I know every other church has to deal with the instructions the Lord gave them. And amen, they have to listen to that. But the instructions the Lord gave our apostle, the instructions the Lord is giving our leadership, our staff, is right now, we need to abide by the policies that are going on right now. For those of you who live in Newark, you know and you see what's going on. For those of you that live in, because not, not all of you live close proximity to the church. So we might see things in our perspective and say, this is great. This is, I don't know why people are so anxious. I don't know why people are so sad. I don't know why this and that. But when you have a family member Hello, I got two that have overcome the coronavirus, that have overcome this and still lingering, but, but getting healed, it hits you a different way. But even with that, we could still rest in the finished promises of the, the works of what God has done. Amen. Even through that, you can rest and believe that God is still working. I know me personally, not all my questions have been answered and I know you all you have so many questions and they haven't been answered but can god still be god oh come on what's that scripture not by sight not by sight we don't walk by sight you want to see evidence you want to see should i go left right now it's we're in the dark but we are walking by faith hallelujah is this blessing someone i don't want to go on a rant and it's not blessing anyone is this blessing someone so i'm put yes Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Someone said, go deep. Thank you. Rest, rest, rest. Again, you would be surprised how many people are anointed, saved, baptized, real in the word of God that still don't fully trust the Lord. And it makes me think about Matthew 9, 23. You know that scripture where the man tells Jesus, Lord, I believe but help my unbelief. I believe you're working. I believe what your word says, but there's this other piece of me. 
Can you help my unbelief? And maybe that's where you're at right now. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And you know, we're talking a lot about rest and rest and rest and rest. What does rest mean? Let's define it. Let's define it. Rest. Rest means cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh, or recover strength. I'm going to read it again. What does rest mean? Rest means cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh, or recover strength. How many of us punch out of work, but we're still working? How many of us walk away from the computer, walk away from that project, walk away from the office? We're done with work. We're done with our hours, but we're still working. You're not resting. You're not resting. And we have to make sure we have the right definition of rest. Because for some of you hearing this, you might hear the phrase lazy. For so many of us, when, he, when we hear the phrase rest, we think, we think someone that's just, oh, I'm just resting. Like it's a lazy posture. Let me tell you something. The Bible speaks a lot about work. It speaks about rest. <clears throat> but it also speaks about work. So the, the Bible does not show that rest means be lazy. If anything, the Bible is very clear that we should not be lazy. If you want more information on that, look up 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. It tells you exactly what to do with lazy people. Check those two Bibles, uh, those two books of the Bibles out. And, and once more, talking about how rest is not being lazy, it's interesting because again, the Bible speaks about work. If anything, it speaks about the balance. Because yes, we, we work, but we also need that moment of rest. I, think about Paul, Paul, I forget what book of the Bible, but he even expresses, the Apostle Paul, he even expresses, when I go to a city to minister to, this is my paraphrase, when I go to a city to minister to, I work so that I'm not a burden on the people that I, I'm coming to minister to. You know what scripture I'm talking about? Where he says, I work. And, and it's like, I don't want to, uh, you know that phrase like, oh, I don't want to put you out. I don't want to take advantage. Even Paul said, I work. I make my own money to make sure I'm not now a burden to those that I came to serve. The apostle Paul is working. He's not sitting back serve me, bring me something. No, no, no. So we could see clearly in the Bible that we are called to work, but we are also called to rest. Amen. So we have to change the definition of what rest is. Many of us, you know, I think is we're trying to be funny with our sarcasm, but sarcasm is just truth trying to turn it into humor so that nobody questions us, but we're really like saying some truth, but we, you know, that's a whole nother preaching when it comes to sarcasm, but some of us go rest, ha, huh. what's that? Relaxation, ha, huh. I'm just, a, you know, I just work hard. And it, it sounds nice because we have been in a culture for so long that it's been seen as normal. It's been seen, if anything, praiseworthy to be a workaholic. It's been seen praiseworthy to not have boundaries. It's can I go there? It's been seen as praiseworthy to always be out doing another project, having three side hustles, always making money, 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 make sure everything's good. And, and uh, we've been conditioned to believe that that rushed life of working and working and not resting is okay. And some of us say, I'll rest when I'm dead. I'll rest when this gets accomplished. No, the Lord is saying the instructions for you, you right now is rest. Rest. Take a moment. Cease work. Turn off your brain. Take a moment. Stop overthinking. Take a, watch a movie with your kids. Do a picnic in your backyard if you have a backyard. Do something to rest. For some of us, rest is so hard. 
For some of us, we don't, we were never taught what it is to rest. For some of us, our parents were work workaholics. For some of us, our parents had poor boundaries. And I'm going to step on that because some of you are saying, whoa, that's a reflection of poor boundaries. Yes. When you don't know how to schedule your time correctly, that is a sign of poor boundaries. That is a sign that burnout is right around the corner. And it could be ministry. You could say, oh, I'm just over, I'm doing all these lives. And now I'm doing all this now. And I'm, now I'm preparing different preachers and now I'm being invited and now I'm in all these events. Did God assign all those things to you or was it your ego? You got to be careful because being overworked, being overbooked to the point where it's now affecting you physically and you can't sleep right and you're getting back aches and all these different things are happening because you don't know how to rest. God wants you to rest and for some of us we were never taught how to rest. For some of us we don't know how important rest is hallelujah for some of us we hear the phrase self-care have you heard that phrase before self-care for some of us we hear the phrase self-care and we think oh that's just for those who are weak-minded that self-care is for those people that they don't work well under pressure i work well under pressure i could do that other project and this other thing and that church event and this other food drive, and I could do this all in one day. I don't need self-care. If that's you today, your instruction is to rest. Self-care is not a, pl uh, what's the phrase I wanna look for? Self-care is not a, uh, like a pleasurable thing. Self-care is a necessity. Rest is a necessity. Rest doesn't have to be this luxurious thing. Rest is, there's so much research. This is how I know it's so godly. There's so much research on resting that even us with the, uh, the Apple phone, there's a little app that says breathe. There's something in our Apple watch that has to remind us, hey, breathe. That just shows you that before this pandemic, our society was corre, corre. I gotta go to the mall. There's this new sale. If I buy this candle, I get another candle 50% off. I gotta go to the movies. I gotta get the tickets because I have to see that movie in the theater because it won't look right if I wait for it on Netflix. I gotta watch that show. I gotta binge watch this. I have to buy this. We have been conditioned to rush. Think about that. Think about January. Think about February, right before all this hit. We were conditioned to think it was normal, to think it was normal to rush out of work, to rush home, to rush and rush and rush and rush. God is saying now rest, rest, rest. Oh, well rest is for those who can't handle pressure, rest. Oh, rest is for those who are weak-minded. If this is true, why did God rest on the seventh day? I don't think God doesn't know how to work under pressure. I don't think God doesn't know how to handle big projects. God even rested on the seventh day. Why? Because he was able to sit back. I pray this is blessing someone. What time is it? I don't want to be too long. I'm going to start closing up. But I, God was able to do everything he did and then take a step back and rest. He rested. Jesus rested when he was in the storm. Rest, rest. But going back to God on the seventh day, he was able to appreciate what he did. He was able to say, ah, this is good. Because he was able to take a step back. Right now, this is a season for you, dad, to take a step back and see your children. Right now, this is a season for you, homeowner, to just look at your house and actually appreciate your house. The other day, my, my husband and I, we, we were sitting in the backyard and let me tell you, my backyard is not huge, but I appreciate even more my backyard. Why? Because I know that there's people in New York that live in studios. I know of people that live in New York that they don't have a backyard. I know of people that live here in New Jersey that don't have a nice walkway to be outside and enjoy the sun. So this for you is a time to appreciate what you have.
I appreciate that I have more than one TV. So when Sophia wants to watch something, I could go to the other room and watch something else. Little things that we take for, for advantage. I appreciate that I have nice neighbors. I can appreciate uh, all these things and I don't take it for granted. Is this a time for you to do that now? Don't take it for granted, your wife. Don't take for granted your spouse. Now when they're, you know, you gotta cook more now. Don't take for granted your stove. I, I'm, I'm serious, those little things that you've had all the time. Not everyone has a stove, not everyone has a microwave, not everyone has those tools. Not everyone has a big refrigerator, not everyone has a freezer. I'm talking about little mundane things that we have taken for granted because again, we have been in a season of rush, 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 get this done, get this done. And that's why most of us, we feel like we can never hit success because we never take in a time to step back and go, wow, I might not be where I'm at, but I'm not where I was. Wow, I could take a step back and appreciate my family. I appreciate my daughter's humor. She is hilarious. She will put on a play for me and I could sit back and just watch and appreciate it. I can rest. Can you rest? Let's finish this up. Psalms 23, that scripture that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know what scripture I'm speaking on? He makes me lie down and green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. There was a part there that jumped at me. He makes me, he makes me lie down. King James Version, he maketh me. He makes me, he makes you lie down. Some of us, God has to make us lie down. Come on, that scripture says, he maketh me lie down. And it's funny, because years ago I had a dog and I remember Jonathan trying to train him how to lay down and he was a bulldog. So he, you know, bulldogs are stubborn. He doesn't want to lay down. I remember Jonathan like, come on, you gotta lay down. So I think in a way, my visual, I think of God going, would you rest? And God's like, would you lie down? Look at that scripture, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me. He maketh me lie down in green pastures because he knows I'm just going to stand up and walk around and take selfies and not really appreciate it. He maketh me lie down. He leads us beside still waters because most of us will just walk right past the still waters. He has to lead us. So God right now is making us lie down. It was probably God who cut down your hours. Come on, he's in control anyways. And you know, I've, I've seen people write posts, you know, they're trying to be motivational. Hey, if you don't leave this quarantine without a side hustle and a new talent, you're wasting your time. Uh, that's not the instruction for everyone. I'm sorry. For some of you, yes. For some of you out of this season, you're going to learn a new talent that you've had that you never knew was there. For some of you, you're going to learn how to do different projects. For some of you, you'll have a side hustle, but there's others of you that you need to rest. Look at that. We are so conditioned to be super busy and overworked that even during a time of quarantine, it's like, well, what else can I do? I have to have another job. I have to have another thing to do. I have to make money, 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 money. We don't know how to rest. For some of you, this is a season to spend more time with your kids. You've been, you think about before quarantine, you were working, overworked, had a night job, doing overtime. You were doing all these things just to do, to, to, to get ends meet. You were doing your job, amen. Right now, God is saying rest. That extra two, three, four hours you have in your day, be with your family. Rest is not so much an action, but a mindset. I'm gonna say that again, and I'm almost done. It's almost time for lunchtime. I feel him getting hungry. <laughs> rest is more than just an action. Rest is a mindset. Why do I say that? Because how many of us sit down to watch a movie and we're not there? We're physically there looking at the screen, but our minds is, I gotta get that email done. I gotta do that other project. 
I gotta make sure I call so and so. I gotta call my mom. I gotta make sure I do this. I gotta do the laundry. Oh, the laundry's still in the dryer. Wait, I gotta take out the laundry. I gotta do. Our minds are not in rest. So you could physically be still, but mentally, are you still? Be still and know that He is God. Rest needs to be intentional. Now that you're listening about rest and you're like, you know what, Priscilla, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, minister. I'm going to, I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. I'm just going to wait until I see moments where I can rest. No, you need to rest and it needs to be intentional. Just like you write in your schedule, your, your, your work schedule, just like you write in your schedule. Don't forget to call so-and-so don't forget to do this. You have to put it in there intentionally. Don't forget to rest. Just like your phone, uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying phone. Just like your watch or your app on your phone reminds you, beep, beep, breathe. <laughs> we need something to invade and interrupt our lives to remind us, hey, slow down, rest. And again, this is not for the weak. This is not for those who can't handle pressure. If anything, people who learn how to rest know how to handle pressure even more because they're able to be present. They're able to focus. Let me end with this. There's some distractions we have from resting. Are you guys being blessed? After this, you guys are gonna take a nap, you're gonna rest. Someone put, yes, that's the truth. We stuck at home, but we're not resting. Absolutely. I want this to be so ingrained in you that when you're outside doing groceries and you have your gloves and you have your mask and you're looking at people, you're in rest mode. Okay. What's my list? Okay, ahora tengo que comprar huevo, leche, okay, el pan. You're in rest mode. When you're walking into, if you have to go to the bank and you're looking at people like, okay, you got to do six feet. You're in rest mode. You get the difference? Your mind is in rest. And if you think about it, I'm going to go a little CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy real quick. When you think something, then comes the behavior. So when you could tell someone who's in rest mode because they're less fidgety. You could tell someone who's in rest mode because they have eye contact. They're focused on you. You, you could hear them breathe. You could hear them in rest. Are you in rest? So there's some distractions. There's some distractions that come to block us from rest. Number one is worry. And that could come from overthinking. That could come from even just having an overload of information. I tell this to all of my clients and church, I want to tell you, after a while, turn off the news. I'm going to say it again. After a while, turn off the news. We were not meant to have information 24 seven on our fingertips. We were not meant to be bombarded and, and have this overload of information. Now, I'm not even saying it's bad information. Information's information. It's new things that we now need to process, understand how are we gonna perceive it? How the, there's, there's so much that happens mentally in our brain capacity when we receive information. So when you have the news on 24 seven in the background, no matter what new, this is not a political, whatever news you watch, overload of information for anyone can cause worry because it, we were not meant to receive and receive and receive and how many cases are there now and how many, and okay, these people have recovered, great. It's still information and sometimes it, it just overloads us and then we get overwhelmed and now we're worried and now we can't rest. Now I'm trying to watch a movie, but my brain is over here doing all this work, trying to understand, perceive, uh, how am I going to process this now? And now I'm trying to have dinner with my daughter, but I'm not present. I'm over here. Learn when to say, click, turn off. I saw Pastor Stephen Furtrick do this. Our phones have this really nice button on the side that if you just turn it off, your phone, you could turn off. Some of us, we leave it on all day long. After a while, turn it off. After a while, turn off your social media. Oh my goodness. So many people can share so much bad information, invalid information, 
turn it off. Another distraction we have from resting is our pride. I could get it done. I could do that project and this project and so-and-so's project from my job. I could do it all. I don't need to rest. I don't need to sleep. I don't need a break. I don't need a lunch break. How many of us before, come on, can you be honest? I'm, I'm wrapping up. How many of us before this quarantine would work through our break? We wouldn't take lunch. That's happened to me before. Like, no, I could, I could keep going. I feel good. Think of that scripture, Matthew 26. The spirit is willing, but then the flesh is weak. And now, now later you have a migraine. You don't feel good. You have an upset stomach. A lot of these things we're feeling is because of poor decisions, because we have poor boundaries, because we don't know how to rest. So another distraction to rest is pride. We take on more than we should. We take on more than we should because we try to prove something. We're trying to prove something. So think of that. Think of those two things, worry and pride. It could be blockers of our rest. And as I'm closing, rest is a mindset. It's not just an action. Think of all the scriptures that speak on the mind. Lord God, renew our mind daily. Transform my mind. So as we close this, Jonathan, if you could put some, some music in the background, I wanna ask you all, do you rest? Not do you sit down. Cause so many of us, we think of rest as a position. We sit down, but we're still on our phone. Our husband, can I go there? Our husbands are talking to us and we're just like, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. no, babe, it's because I can multitask. Uh-huh. And we're checking our emails. And it's not even saying that we're not, that we're just doing something dumb on our phones. Some of us were doing work on our phones because now you got your emails and we're not paying attention. We're not resting. How many of us, our children are trying to talk to us and we're like, uh-huh, we're looking at them, but our brain is, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta run over here. Again, again. We have been so used to being overworked. We have been so used to, at the end of the day, feeling exhausted and going, that's because I was productive today and now my bones hurt and my back hurt and oh, well done. No, rest. Find that balance. Rest doesn't mean being lazy. Find that balance, work and rest. Look what God did. He did all he did the first day, the second day. And then on the seventh day, he rested. During this season, this tough season, yes, no one takes that away. This financial tough season, nobody takes that away. Can you rest? Because again, Psalms 121 says, he never sleeps. He never slumbers. The Lord shall preserve you from evil. The Lord shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your coming in, your going out. And knowing that, I can rest. Right there where you are, let's pray. And don't forget that Matthew chapter 11 Verse 28, 29, Jesus is speaking to the people. He says, I, I will give you rest. God wants us to rest. He will give us rest. Let's pray. If you've been blessed with this, write it there. This might ha not have been the message you were looking for. This might not, I'm just gonna look here to see those who are still watching. This might not have been the message you were looking for. This might not have been the uh, instruction you wanted. But this is what I hear from the Lord. Fountain of life, rest. Let me do my job. Fountain of life, rest. Rest. The Lord says it. Matthew 11, 28, 29, and I will give you rest. The question is, will you receive it? Will you receive rest? Because God could give it. Will you receive it? Right there where you are, wherever you're at. If you're in the kitchen doing dishes, stop. If you're doing something else right now, stop, rest. 
Stop. Be present in what's going on right now, okay? If you can, have your hands like this in a position of receiving, symbolically. And say, Lord, I receive your rest. We know that that's the instructions for right now. It's to rest. And Lord God, right now, I want to do a special prayer for our pastors. Can we pray over our pastors? Lord God, we thank you. Let's pray for our pastors right there where you are. Lord God, we thank you for our pastors. We thank you for our apostles. We thank you that they too can rest. Lord God, I thank you in the name of Jesus that, that there is no pressure over them. There is no worry over them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that they too can be in a season of rest. Come on, pray for your pastors right there where you are. Lift it up, pray for your pastors. Lord God, we thank you that you give them instructions on how to lead and minister to their congregation, Lord God, which is us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for specific instructions that you give our apostles. We thank you that it comes clear. We thank you, Lord God, that this is a season where they could do more and do more rest, Lord God, that they could find that balance, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, you guys, pray over them. Pray over them. Lord God, we thank you for our pastors. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that they could sleep easier. We thank you, Lord God, for their health. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that through all of this, Lord God, we've heard of different pastors that got the virus. We thank you, Jesus, that our pastors are covered in the name of Jesus. No harm, no harm, no harm can come close to our pastors in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray with me, pray with me. We pray over our pastor. We pray over our pastora, Lord God, over pastora. This is a new year for her lord jesus lord god and she can enjoy it in the comfort of her home lord jesus thank you for that symbolism she can enjoy this new year the start off in the comfort of her own home thank you lord jesus that through all of this she's still smiling thank you lord jesus that through all of this she has a new song in her heart thank you lord jesus that through all of this she can still laugh I think of the Proverbs 31 woman. We, she can laugh at the days to come, meaning there's joy in her heart, God. We thank you that there's joy in Pastora's heart, Lord God. We thank you for Pastor. We thank you for his word. We thank you for his direction. We thank you for our apostles. Come on, pray right there with me. Gracias, Señor, por nuestros apóstoles. Gracias, Señor, por la dirección que tú, that you give them specifically for us, God. I thank you, Jesus, that the attack of the enemy is so far away from them, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's no weapon formed against them that can prosper. It can't even come close, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that our pastors are covered from head to toe. I thank you that not even the common cold can touch our pastors in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you cover them. You bless them financially, mentally, emotionally. You bless them. Come on, can you cover your pastors? Cover your pastors right there where you are. I know you need to need prayer for your household. I know you need prayer for what's going on in your lives right now, but let's cover our pastors in prayer right now. Come on, cover them in prayer. Lord God, we thank you, and I just hear that. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure over them, Lord Father God. Let there be no pressure to have an answer, Lord Jesus. Let them not have stress. We take stress off of them in the name of Jesus. Let their shoulders, like I see like shoulders being loosed. Let their shoulders be loosed in the name of Jesus. Any tension in their neck, any tension in their shoulders. I don't know if that's symbolically or, or, or pastors, if you woke up with pain in your shoulders, but we just thank you for loose shoulders loose loose neck in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i just see that so i'm gonna do it we thank you for loose shoulders no no stress some of us we feel stress in our neck and our shoulders we take that off of our pastors in the name of jesus we thank you for no migraines we thank you for no tension headaches come on church let's pray you want to pray you want to do this let's go let's pray for them and thank you jesus Thank you, God. Let's keep praying. Lord God, I thank you that they are covered from head to toe. I thank you for strategic 
instructions and strategic plans for Fountain of Life Church. Lord God, let's continue. We continue praying, Lord God, for our ministers. Lord God, I thank you for my husband. I thank you for his mind. I thank you for his creativity to put all of this together, Lord Jesus. I thank you that he can be a beacon of help for other churches as they reach out to him and ask him how to get things done. Lord God, we pray over Minister Angel and his family. Lord Father God, we thank you that you protect his coming and going. Come on church, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me. I see you writing, I see you writing. Hallelujah, we pray over Minister Angel, and we pray over Rebecca, the family, his household, Lord God. We thank you that increase comes to his house. We, that's the word I hear for you, uh, Minister Angel. Increase that comes to his house. Hallelujah. Oh man, I feel the prophetic anointing right now. I see you, Minister Angel, walking into your house. So I don't even know if you're watching this. You're probably going to watch the recording. I don't know if you're, 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 you're working right now. But Minister Angel, I see you walking into your house with those big, long, loaves of bread like several of them and I see that coming into your house big long loaves of bread and I know that that means uh, uh, resources that means that your house will never lack bread your house will never lack bread we pray that over you minister angel Rebecca your whole household your whole family we thank you for protection over your lives we thank you for protection physically over your lives we thank you Lord Jesus that they are covered their family is covered we pray Lord God over minister Alex Lord Jesus we thank you for for his life we thank you for his coming in and his going out we thank you for him we thank you for Solmari. we thank you lord god that his whole house is 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 protected in the name of jesus his neighbors are protected because of him in the name of jesus if he has neighbors that don't know lord god of you lord jesus his neighbors are protected because of him that whole street lord jesus is protected because of the anointing that's in their lives lord father god i thank you come on can you help me pray Help me pray. Don't go to sleep just yet. Don't rest just yet. Let's rest in the promises of the Lord as we pray. Amen. We thank you for Minister Alex. We thank you for Minister Alex. We thank you for Minister Alex and his household. We thank you for Solmari. We thank you, Lord Jesus, as she teaches her students. We thank you, Lord God, that as she prepares to, to study and to minister to her students, Lord God, that you give her as well creativity, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that household, Lord God. We thank you for creating creativity Lord Jesus over minister Alex home and Lord God we cannot close without praying for the Morales family Lord Jesus right there where you are church Let's pray for the Morales family Lord God. We thank you that you cover Graciela with comfort and strength Thank you Lord Jesus that you cover Graciela with 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 a robe of strength over her right now Lord God come on can you pray over pray over Graciela right now Pray over Graciela right now. Pray over her right now. Lord God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit, wherever she is right now, your Holy Spirit is a comfort for her in this time of need. We thank you for our brother Jeff. We thank you, Lord God, that you too are a comfort for him. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that he knows, he feels you close, Lord God. We pray over the Morales family. We pray in the name of Jesus that they will lack nothing hallelujah come on church we pray that they will lack nothing during this time in the name of jesus be their comfort lord god be their comfort lord jesus be their peace that surpasses all understanding and lord god we pray over fountain and we receive the instruction of rest we will rest because the work is finished we will rest because you who watch over us, you don't sleep. You don't take breaks. You don't slumber. We can rest right there where you are. Begin to just breathe that in. Thank you, God, because we can rest. Even in uncertainty, we can rest. Thank you for rest, God. In our weakness, you are strong, God. We can rest. Hallelujah.